This video is an introduction to confidence intervals. At this point in our course, we are switching gears from what is called descriptive statistics to what is called inferential statistics. And essentially what that means is we are very interested in the real world about finding out information or certain characteristics about the population. And remember, those characteristics about a population were called parameters. Often it's not feasible for us to take a census. If you'll recall, a census is where you speak to every person in the population or test every subject in the population. And so instead what we look at is we look at a sample. So we look at a smaller subset of the population that we feel is representative of the whole population. And that is what we're going to be focusing on now. So we're going to look at confidence intervals. And in those intervals, it's going to give us an idea based on our sample of what we can expect to see about the population. And of course, it's an interval because it's based on one sample. And so if I took a sample and you took a sample, our samples would be different, our intervals would be different, but we're looking at a basic range of where we might find the population parameter. Once we've looked at confidence intervals, then we'll move forward into hypothesis testing. So again, because what we're doing is we are looking at estimating the population parameter, in this case a mean, we would find a sample and we would have some level of confidence. So for instance, a 95% level of confidence means that C is 0.95. So you'll always see that number between zero and one. And what that means is we expect that 95% of the time we will capture the true population parameter. So for instance, if this first one was my interval, that means my sample was here. And then I go out in each direction, what is called the margin of error. And we're gonna look at all of this together, but I just want you to understand where we're going. And then if this were my sample, and again, I would go out the same distance on each side for the margin of error for that. And notice, if this 29 is the true mean, my first sample did capture the true mean because this is an interval based on some sample value. And if this is my observed and I have gone in each direction, notice I have obviously captured my sample as well. Now let's come over and look at the fifth sample. If this was my sample, and then I calculated a margin of error, if you'll notice, between these two values, so this is between 25 and 29, so this is probably 25, and this is probably, say, 28.5, notice 29 is not between those two values. So we expect that to happen because, again, it's a confidence interval. So if it's a 95% confidence interval, we expect that 95% of the time, we're going to capture the true population parameter, in this case, the true mean. So how do we create a confidence interval? Well, we're going to look at a lot of different situations, but they all come back to this basic idea. What we're going to do is we're going to find some point estimate and Remember that that point estimate is going to be based on our sample. So if this is dealing with means, we're going to find the mean of our sample. If this is dealing with proportions, we're going to find that P hat of our sample. That's going to be our point estimate that's an unbiased estimator. And then in terms of the interval, again, we're going to look at margin of error. Now your book uses E for the margin of error. So essentially what we're going to do is subtract whatever the margin of error is and add whatever the margin of error is, and we're going to end up with an interval. So before we move on, I just want to remind you of a little bit of math that you may or may not remember. When I'm writing an interval, let's say I have an interval from three 
And then I say 3 is less than or equal to x. Uh, let's just do less than. 3 is less than x is less than 10. That means my x value is between 3 and 10. The way that we write that in an interval is 3 comma 10. And we use those open brackets, so the curvy parentheses. If I had something like 3 is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to 10, then I'm going to use those closed brackets. But the good news is we don't care about that because all of our intervals are going to look like this. Let's do just one example together. And again, I just want you to get a sense of what a confidence interval is in this video. And as we move forward through the rest of this chapter, you will have plenty of practice in finding these values yourself. So we have a college student researching study habits, collects data from a random sample of 250 college students on her campus and calculates that the sample mean um, is X bar. So remember, that's the notation we're going to use for a sample mean of 15.7 hours. So this is an important piece of information. And not for this question, but typically this would be an important piece of information as well. So I'll just leave that out there. Uh, if the margin of error for her data using a 95% confidence level, so this typically would be something that's important um, later. Uh, for now, we're just going to point out that it's 95%. Uh, the margin of error is 0.6. So this is important now because, and this is something that we're going to calculate on our own later. But this is given to us now just so we can get the basic idea. So we're trying to construct a 95% confidence interval and then talk about what it means. So the point estimate is our sample mean. So our point estimate is that X bar of 15.7 hours. The margin of error is E, which has already been calculated for us at 0.6. So in order to find the lower endpoint and upper endpoint, essentially what it's going to look like is we're going to have 15.7 here in the middle, and then I'm going to add 0.6 to the right. So if I add 0.6 to 15.7, I get 16.3. And then I'm going to subtract 0.6 to the left, that's gonna give me 15.1, and I've subtracted it from the point estimate. So if, as you can see, 15.1 hours, 16.3 hours, my confidence interval is going to look like this. 15.1 to 16.3. Notice the curved parentheses. Um, you might also see it written like this, but typically this is the way I'm going to want to see it. The interpretation is that we are 95% confident that the true population mean for the number of hours per week that students on this campus spend studying is between 15.1 hours and 16.3 hours. So again, what we're saying is we don't know the actual mean of the entire population of college students, but based on our sample, we think it's somewhere between these two values. So hopefully that got our feet wet a little bit in terms of what a confidence interval is all about. Now what we're going to do is we are going to start creating our own confidence intervals. And for this next section, it is going to be estimating population means where sigma, which is the population uh, standard deviation, is known.